Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast, episode 890. I'm your host, Surreal Gerald Quinn. Uh, as we record this on a Wednesday, uh, we're going to be, this is going to be a heavy, very heavy NBA podcast uh, with the amount of trades and, and, and things that are going on. Of course, you have the draft tomorrow night. Um, we'll see what happens uh, in terms of what Portland does with that third pick. Um, with that third pick, and uh, you know, we'll see. It'll this should be interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, or with that number two pick, I should say, uh, it should be interesting to say the least. Um, in terms of there are a bunch of trades, there, there are going to be a number of trades that happen. Uh, the Celtics are in the midst of pulling off a, a, a major one, getting Kristoff Porzingis from Washington in a three way deal with the Wizards and also the Clippers. So which would that which would be great for the Celtics? That that'd be a big time move. Don't only giving up Malcolm Brogdon uh, to get pissed off Porzingis. Uh, but we're going to be, begin with Bradley Bill going to Phoenix. Um, this tra- this course transpired a couple of days ago. Um, seems like it happened a long time ago. It actually happened. It was uh, Sunday. I this weekend was like a blur. So I get Sunday through Tuesday mixed up. To be honest with you, like it's. <laughs> One of is one of those weekends, a lot going on. So it happened over the weekend. Uh, you see Bradley Bill go to uh, the Phoenix Sun. He he Suns. He weighs his no trade clause. Washington gets four second round picks along with Landry Shamit, Chris Paul. Chris Paul more than likely will be either traded again or bought out. I don't ever see him l- lacing putting on a Phoenix Sun. Uh, excuse me, a Washington Wizards uniform. No, the Wizards could you know. Let that contract run off at thirty million dollars, which it, uh, let that expiring contract worth, uh, which is worth thirty three million thirty million dollars, go off their books, which is what they're trying to do with all these moves that they're making. Uh, just trying to get this freed up of money from expensive veteran players that they have that you know that are on their team that they have no chance of advancing with, like Bradley, Bradley Bill, uh, Porzingis, those guys, Kuzma, those guys, you know players but you were not going to, you were a playing team at best um in their current currently constructed so put the wizards aside for a second uh and by the way I, the people that are criticizing the wizards have if you're criticizing the wizards on this move you just don't understand what the fuck you're talking about like this was a great move for the wizards this was a necessary move for the wizards they are winger who came from the clippers is it's completely doing this the right way they have to tear this down and start from scratch like yeah, either either you're competing for a championship, or you are building towards, um, you know, building a foundation. Right now, they're not competing for a championship, and they have, in essence, even with Bill and Porzingis and Cruz, but they had no foundation on that team. So, this is the exact way that they should go about uh, rebuilding that team and rebuilding that franchise. But let's get to the the Phoenix Suns. Um, part of this. So Phoenix, they go out there, they trade a bunch of assets, draft picks, good quality players, Cam Johnson, Bridges, uh, for Kevin Durant. They go all in on Kevin Durant. They get knocked out in the second round by the Denver Nuggets. I know they tied this series up at two, but really no one ever believed that they were going to win that series. At least I did even at 2-2, game five in Denver. Denver washed them in the last two games. So, as a current, currently constructed right now, yes, you, in essence, move Chris Paul for Bradley Bill. Um, and you look at the construction of your team right now, yeah, you have a very top-heavy team with uh, Durant, Durant, uh, Booker, Durant, Booker, Bill and eight. I would I would compare the, the the Suns to someone who just misuses a credit card and just hasn't learned from their mistakes. Like currently going on in our country, you get a little economics in here. Currently going on in our country, despite the fact that we're supposed to be in a quote unquote recession, people are spending just insane amounts of money. It's like, hold on, I thought that we were in a recession. Um, the job rates, the job rates did go up. The job, you know, um, unemployment, down unemployment, um, 
uh, jobs did go up though last month. You know that was very quietly reported, but the jobs, uh, the unemployment rate did go down last month. But anyway, people we're supposed to be in a recession and keep and with inflation the whole bit, but people are just spending ridiculous amounts of money. How? Well, credit cards is simple, and credit card debt is at an all time high. And I look at the Suns again. I look at the Suns like a team that just misuses that credit card. Like instead of, you know, maybe only having one credit card instead of three or four that you max out, just having one and paying the bill on that one after every after each and every month, you let you let the interest, you let your bills, you only pay a certain amount of, uh, on it, that the interest pick up, and next thing you know, you're like ten to fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt, which a lot of Americans are right now. So the Suns go all in on the rent. Right. Okay. Now they go all in on Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill's contract, he has four years left, $207 million. Now, let's, for a second, I'm going to put aside the luxury tax, the, the new CBA, the second and first and second apron. I'm not going to like, not so much bore you, but I'm not even going to go all into those details because the Suns actually won't be affected by that. Um, immediately. They actually have a year. That's one of the reasons why they were able to make this deal because they actually, they're not a repeater in terms of the, the luxury tax. They're not, in a, they're not in that repeater mode. So they won't have to deal with that. They want to pay the tax on that right now. Soon, in a couple of years, but not right now. And they're, they're in win now mode as it is. But the bottom line is you better hit on the on, on DeAndre, on the on a DeAndre Aiden trade. That's the only, that's the only way that this that's this even remotely makes sense. If you trade DeAndre Aiden for like two, forget about draft picks, trade him for two or three players that can help you win right now. Rotation players, shooters, 3 and D guys to fill out the rest of your roster. It's the only way that this trade even remotely makes sense. Uh, what, have we, what, did, what have we just, what, what, what did we just witness in this past NBA Finals, right? Heat culture, Denver going through taking some lumps, um, going through a process of uh, yes, they have Jokic is all time great. They have Jamal Murray who's an all star, all NBA caliber player. Yes, we understand that, but those guys were drafted and developed, and they picked up some nice pieces. They made the right trades. They picked, like they they did it the right way, and we saw it with we Milwaukee a couple of years ago. Even you know last year. Well, Golden State is Golden State. Like we know how they were built. They were. We know how they were built um, in terms of how drafting and developing players. Draymond Green was a second round player, second round pick. No one thought Curry. No one thought Clay Thompson was going to be as, as good, be a future Hall of Famer. And Curry's Curry. And they. So it's not like it's. It, listen, in today's NBA right now, it, you're not. You cannot ring chase if you're a franchise. Ring chasing only works for players. <laughs> who are veteran players trying to get on, you know, get with a team like Denver or a team like Miami or a team like Boston. That may work for those guys, for those players. It does not work for a franchise. You cannot ring chase for a franchise. And what I mean by that is there's not going to be one move if you're a franchise that puts you over the top, that gets you from, the, from this place to a championship. And if moving forward, it is going to be a, 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 a process of building, developing, drafting, and what have you. That's, that, that's just the way the NBA is going to work for moving forward. I, again, if you're Phoenix, again, they bet they're, again, I don't think Phoenix is done. They're going to have to trade DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton just cannot be on the team next year. They can't, like, they have no depth. They have, like, I mean, Kevin Durant. You know, God, Kevin Durant is already breaking down. And now you look at the roster right now, even if they are to trade for, make, some, make a trade, trade DeAndre and get a couple of players. Booker, well, let's put Booker aside because he's probably, Booker probably would be the most healthiest out of the three guys. You have Durant and Bradley Bill. Um, Bradley Bill has not played in more than 60 games in five years. Kevin Durant hasn't played in more than 55 games since 2019 when he that's when he uh ruptured his Achilles. That's what you're dealing with right now, as far as durability goes. So, yes, what happens when those guys miss 20 or 30, 30, 30 games in a season? 
you don't develop chemistry, you get to the playoffs, and no one knows how to play with how to each other's tendencies and how to play with how to play with each other. Like no one knows. There's no it, like there's no foundation from that standpoint. There are no habits that are built upon that you trust over the court that you trust going into the postseason. There's no continuity. So again, this idea that as a franchise, you are one move away. No, 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 no. That's a, it's just not how the NBA is moving. It, that's it's not how. That's not what's going to win you a championship in today's NBA. It's not going to happen. Now, again, it's one thing for Miami. They are Miami has a foundation. They have Jimmy Butler. They have Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo. They can go out there and swing and go out at, go after Dame Lillard. Like that, 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 that would be an appropriate swing of the, like swinging, not swinging for offenses, but that would be an appropriate move to upgrade that roster going after uh, a, a guy like Dame Lillard. They could do that. There's a, there's a foundation. So Phoenix, again, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> And we, I mean, I, I hate to say the curse of Kevin Durant because he did win two championships with uh, Golden State, but it, it just Kevin Durant since you know Kevin Durant left Steph Curry, yeah, and he's tried to do his own thing. Brooklyn forcing to trade to Phoenix thing is is yeah, hasn't worked out well. That's not, that's not worked out well. And again, if you're Kevin Durant, like. I'm saying to myself, okay, even with the mood of things, like, what do they have to, what, like, what is this team going to look like um, once I come here and we have to trade all these pieces and all these, all these assets? What are, like, in terms of the depth, I, yeah, this is why players don't make great general managers, but he doesn't, like, he doesn't have that, didn't have that foresight. And, and right now, if you're a Phoenix fan, like, you have an owner who just doesn't have like I call him he's like the new Tommy boy. He does he has zero clue what he's doing from a basketball standpoint. He may be a great businessman. He clearly was a great businessman. You become an uh, owner of a uh, of NBA team, you're doing something right unless it was uh, you know, bequeathed to you, which in, in this case it wasn't. You went out there, made a number of moves, got yourself enough money and capital to be able to buy an NBA team. I give him credit for that. I take nothing away from him from a business for his business acumen. But as a basketball guy, somebody who knows what he's doing as far as running a franchise from a basketball standpoint, he has doesn't have a clue. And if you're taking cues from Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Lord Thomas, boy, fuck, <laughs> jeez, Ooh. you're taking cues from that dude in terms of running, in terms of running the franchise. You can show you how to ruin a franchise or ruin a, 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 a entire basketball league. Go look at some of that. What happened with the CBA back in the day? Do a little research on that. Dig, dig up some of those articles. Well, Isaiah's, you know, Isaiah's, uh, you know, when he had a uh, did a little cup of coffee with the CBA and how he ran that to the ground. Um, but man, uh, Phoenix is is they, they would be entertaining to watch, but is this is this thing will not end well. Uh, in regards to the Phoenix Suns, it's just not like I don't. Again, we'll see what happens with the. I guess I. I guess to be fair about it, we like this. The, the, this trade probably is not complete until we see what they do. The team is not complete until we see what they do with DeAndre Ayton. But uh, you know, if they they can't come back with DeAndre Ayton, but even if they get two decent players with DeAndre Ayton, um. They still, you're still dealing with a roster that you're still dealing with two of your three best guys that are injury prone. And again, that is a problem. Even if they're healthy for the playoffs, that's a problem as far as, again, trying to build uh, continuity. I Listen, I think Phoenix on talent alone will make the playoffs. Um, I just think that they, you're going to see a, you're going to see Durant, Booker, I mean, maybe less to a lesser extent Booker, but Durant, and Bill just miss a bunch of games, and it's gonna put a lot of toll. It's gonna put a lot of. Uh, it's gonna put a lot on Devin Booker. Um, and I don't know. We don't know what the rest of that team is going to look like. Um, now, again, I myself, I understand moving Chris Paul 
Like I, I do, I, I get it. I myself would have moved Chris Paul for some role players. Like there, there are plenty of guys that could be available as role players, and you can't tell me that you couldn't get a guy to get a couple of role players for Chris Paul with that expiring contract. There are teams out there who want, who would love to have thirty million dollars coming off their books after the 23, 20, 23, 20, 24 season because of the luxury tax, or just because they don't, or just because that. I mean that that is a asset in the NBA. Like draft draft picks are great assets. Expiring contracts are great assets, and other than great players, those are the two best assets to have in the NBA. Besides a great player, I would say second draft pick, and number three, an expiring contract. So, I think you could have got something. I, I would again. I would have made move. I, would, I think they could have moved. Both, they could have built the roster around Durant and Booker. With, with, with trading uh, Paul and Aiden, and then and if they made the right moves, they could have had a roster. They could have completely filled out that roster and been a legit contending team. But to add another star player or all former All Star to try and like go so to kind of try go top heavy, just to move makes zero sense. It makes it makes it makes so to me. I it makes no sense whatsoever to me from that standpoint. You wouldn't need do they do not need Bradley Bill on on this team. And by the way, Bradley Bill can still play. Um he hasn't been good the last couple of seasons since he had he had back to back 30, 30 point per game, average thirty points a game a couple of seasons back to back. One of those seasons he made, I think twenty twenty one, he made all third team all NBA. He hasn't been that player the last three seasons, but because he, he's been hurt. But twenty nine about to turn thirty, he's not done. Like he's still laying by way. You're not you don't need him to average twenty five to thirty points on this team. He's not I mean he's not gonna average twenty five to thirty on on this team with, with Durant and Booker. Um and I think Brad, Bradley Bill is a guy who is a unselfish player. I, I, um he's a team guy. He's a you know, he's a excellent offensive player. He's a legit, legit professional scorer. Um and a good locker room guy from all accounts. But did a lot in the community down here in DC. Stuff some of the stuff he did with, with Banneker Park, those courts. So he's a good like he chemistry from a from a fit as far as locker room veteran presence. Not afraid of the moment when he's gotten when he's gotten his opportunity to play also has played well. So that from that standpoint, yeah, sure. But I, I just don't think that I mean there have been there are some other teams that I think Bradley Bill would have been a much better fit on. Much better fit on uh, per se than the Phoenix Suns, but of course he had total control because he had a you know one of few players in recent memory to have a no trade clause, which was you know give his credit to his agent. But you know the Washington Wizards you know just did, did a horrible job in terms of na uh, navigating that. So I again I don't I think Phoenix this does not end well for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, they would not I, I don't see them get to the finals. I don't see them winning a championship. I just think what right now the way that this owner is moving, just how Kevin Durant, how it's ended for Kevin Durant with some of his decision making, uh, in terms of moving the teams, it hasn't been ended well the last you know with with Brooklyn. I don't see it ending well in Phoenix. As far as Washington, listen, Washington is doing exactly what you should do. That that the, people say, well, what did they get for Bradley Bill? They got from under that contract. That was the most important part of the Bradley Bill deal. Bradley, Bradley Bill of that of this trade from from Washington standpoint, he had four years at two hundred seven million dollars left on his contract. Four years, two hundred seven million dollars. It was going to be one of the worst contracts as he aged in the NBA, easily if not the worst. And that's not about Bradley Bill the player. That's just about the contract. You don't pay that type of money for a player who can who. Couldn't lead you, who can barely lead you to the play-in. That's just not. That's not getting enough bang for your buck. Um, paying a guy a super max contract, and he was on a super max deal. So Washington now can completely rebuild. You can they'll they'll they're gonna move Porzingis to the, the, to uh, to Boston. Seemingly, it's not official, but it seemingly some that that's been rumored to that's that's in play right now, and they will move Kuzma, Kuzma to wherever. So and and just completely tear it apart as they should. Uh, before before we get to the job, as far as Chris Paul, um, listen, I I think Chris Paul 
has some ga- has some gas left in the tank. I I don't I don't think he, he's past he's way past his prime as far as being a top point guard or even an all star point guard. You want Chris Paul on your team, you you cannot you have to you have to have a a legit other point guard on your team that can have Chris Paul and play like they never use him like Utah used to use John Stockton late in his career. The only play he had they had Howard Isley was one of the better backup point guards. Howard Isley would, would play uh a lot of the minutes. He was a younger player, he was much younger and still a quality player. He the system the whole nine. So you work Chris Paul right now at play, no playing no more than twenty five minutes a game. You your I, the idea is to get Chris Paul to the playoffs. That's the idea, you know. So I and I still and again, I think they're they're you know, <laughs> but I I mean, do you? But as you're a contender, I take a shot at Chris Paul. If I were a contender, you know, they talk with the Clippers, Lakers, those teams. The Clippers probably make. I think the Clippers make more sense uh, than the Lakers. I don't think the Lakers need any more age on their team. You got LeBron, a creaky Anthony Davis. I, I like. I I don't know. Chris Paul, the Lakers makes too much sense. It makes more sense on the Clippers, but a veteran team that can you know a veteran team makes perfect sense for Chris Paul at this stage of his career because that's the last thing that's left for him to accomplish as far as uh, she's trying to win a championship and I, I don't see him going, like I said, I, I I don't see him playing for the Wizards or going to a team that is not uh, a legit uh, championship contender. So over the weekend, John Morant on Friday was suspended 25 games. It was a, the suspension, of course, comes as no surprise. The length of the suspension, of course, comes as no uh, surprise. Uh, the NBA suspended John Moran for conduct detrimental to the league. That is a that is a very loaded statement or loaded punishment that could go in terms of what does that exactly mean. Um, first of all, it, it, here's, and he must complete a league-mandated program before even returning to the NBA. Again, whatever that means, a league-mandated program I don't even know what that's going to look like as far as what he'll need to do uh, for the NBA to show the NBA that he's ready to return. Um, Jai would come out. Jai also did did himself no favors coming out with a post of a toy gun saying that it was a toy gun, uh, which, again, to me, made zero sense. Um, The suspension was going to happen regardless if that does it. That's be that's completely beside the point whether it was a toy gun or not. On the surface, the suspension is too harsh considering that there was there was no crime committed by Jai. Uh no one's life was in danger per se. If I look at it on the surface, it's a completely ridiculous suspension in terms of the amount of games. But that's not what we're dealing with. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the, we're talking about the NBA that is as image conscience of a league in regards to what players say about, you know, in terms of what players, how players, in terms of what players, uh, how players represent the league as far as Bob Dollar. If you know this during anything that can take money away, that will take money away from the NBA. So will, they will... They're gonna go crazy on. They're, they're not. They're not gonna play with. They're not playing with their image. They don't want any. They don't want this image of a gun culture in the NBA. They want. They want zero part of it. You're not gonna make a case that some other suspensions should have been 25 games in regards to domestic violence over the past five, the the, the, the ten years, and it's where some guys only got eight to ten games. I mean, Miles Bridges. They claimed it was. It, was 30 games, but it was actually 10 games. Like it actually, it was actually a 10 game suspension. It wasn't 30 games because 20 games, 20 of those games, though, like he just wasn't, no team was going to, you know, pick him up where he wasn't eligible to play. It wasn't a 30 game suspension in essence. It was, in essence, it was a 10 game suspension. And what he did to me was way, way worse than John Morant, to be honest with you. But this is about image. This is about the bottom dollar. Uh, this also is about Adam Silver wanting to show that he is not a soft commissioner. He had developed a rep- reputation, and rightfully so, as being the player's commissioner and being soft when it came to punishment, especially uh, as in comparisons to his predecessor, David Stern, who 
I can only imagine Jai might have been done for the season with David Stern. See, I mean, seriously, I'm not exaggerating. This is how David Stern would have approached this situation because David Stern didn't play with the money either as far as image and, all, and things like that. When it came to the buy, anything that he thought would affect would have affected the Bob Dollar. He would have took it. He would have took a hammer to without question. That's how David Stern moved um, before uh, during his tenure as commissioner. I would say to Jai, um, I don't know how he's going to spend this time. Um, I, I don't again a couple of things. A couple of things that you don't like. You don't like the posting of a, of the toy gun. I don't like that. That, that, that goes besides the point. You don't like statements like he just can't believe that the media is out to get him. And frankly, I didn't like his overall statement because it seemed like it was a carbon copy of a previous apology. And anytime a guy starts apologizing to their sponsors, I have to actually question the how legit the apology is or how contrite the apology is because it's not about your sponsors. It's not like you want to apologize to your family, your friends, your close, you know, people that have helped you get to the point place where you're at. And then, you know, in the NBA, I'm similar, fine. But when you start talking about sponsors, that's when, that's when I, you know, that's, that's the PR stuff. That's, that's when I can't take it serious. And by the way, like what John says at this point can't be taken serious because it's, we don't, we, we've seen, you know, him apologize and do the same shit once again over and over so his words don't mean anything it's about the change about change behavior at this point and to me what john needs to do is just go away and i don't mean that just i don't mean that in a, in a condescending way i don't mean that in a mean way I, I just just let us not see you on instagram let us not see you making any public appearances let us not see you uh let's not hear from you in terms of making statements go 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 away and do the work on yourself whatever that looks like i don't know his therapy i don't know what that looks like talking to somebody who who you trust who's going to be real with you i get i don't know yet i don't know what his religion is if he were you know the confession if he were catholic confession I, i'm serious you know i'm serious when i say this whatever it is just go away like let us not hear from you or you know, the better part of three or four months. Like, let's let's let, let not hear from you at, at at all in terms of making statements. Like, just go, just go away, just go away, go away and do the work. I don't, again, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to see any videos of you working out. You can work out without without videos, without putting without Twitter posts or Instagram posts. I don't need to. I don't need to see that. I don't need to see you working out, lifting weights. You know, with a, a post, hey, putting in the work, getting ready to, you know, uh, making uh, coming back better than ever. I don't know. We don't. We, we get it. We know. We know you're a hard worker on the, on in terms of basketball. We know. We uh, we understand that your your work ethic, as far as your game, has never been in question. You've been most improved player. You got, you, you know, you came in a league with no jump shot. Your jump shot is is improved. So we we know what type of player you are. That's not even in question. What type of player you are? It's about who you are as a man and your character so that that's where we're at right now it's not about your game so it just needs to go away it just needs to go away um however well, how long how long it takes like i honestly I, I i don't again this suspension was not the suspension this is this suspension is not going to directly help john Morant. like the suspension the nba the, suspend the job around because they had to they had to make this type of statement they had to put their foot down they're not suspended the suspension was not designed to help him because it's not like you know 25 games what seven million dollars that you know that's uh, that that money is chump change the job around so that's not going you know like it's not it's not prison like so that like that uh, the actual suspension, I don't think, will have any effect on John Moran from that standpoint. Sure, uh, from the standpoint of actually uh, help him, helping him um, as far as like being away from the game. I think what will, I think he has to uh, really because he knows, you know, the, the, the thing he has going for him still has the money, 
still ha- he still has the money and he there will still still be a, a, a he still have people around him or people that will still defend him so Jai has to go away he has to do the work and we'll we'll see what happens Before we get back to the NBA, um, I wanted to talk about this album that came out. Uh, Killer Mike came out of an album last Friday, this past Friday, called Michael. Um, just an incredible, just the best, I mean, the, just incredible piece of work of art. Um, the best, the, the album of the year right now. I don't think, I think hip hop wise is hands down about album of the year. And I'll be, hip hop has been in a, in a, in a, a, a drought the first half of the year uh no number one um albums or i don't think i, I think if i if i'm correct if, I, if i'm correct no number one songs on billboard's charts throughout in 2023 which you know speaks speaks to, to a lack of quality uh so far and it has been a slow year so far it has not been especially compared since to last year but you know uh, we'll see how the how the year ends uh, from that standpoint. But this one, I'll quite, I I don't like. I'd be surprised if this wasn't the number one album coming next week. Like I, I think that I expect this album to do some some serious numbers. This is, it picked up a lot of steam. It came out you know Juneteenth weekend, so that that I'm certainly just, I'm sure that helped it a lot. But this, to me, I looked at this album and I like. I just I think of uh, artists who have taken their time with their work, and I, I've never seen it fail an artist uh, in recent memory. Um, like we'll see Kendrick Lamar go three or four or five years without an album, and this he's came out with basically nothing but classics. Uh, you know, back in the day, you had, you know with Dr. with Dr. Dre, and how long he's taken in between albums. Killer Mike basically took what a decade, eleven years between his between albums. Never seen it, uh, so I've never seen it fail. So again, it's not you're not gonna see this a uh, trend, this trend in hip hop. You're not gonna see artists take five to ten years. That's just not gonna happen. That's not the way the game is right now, and you know that's not the way the game is right now. But I've never seen it not work for an artist a re- in recent memory taking a while, uh, more than two three years. And being away, and then coming back, and with a with a piece of with with a great quality uh, of an album, and this album checks off all the it checks off all the boxes of lyric lyrics, storytelling, production, uh, how each song is is perfectly placed. Um, just it just a, again an amazing piece of, of of art. It's not it goes beyond just music that that. This album is a piece of it's just a piece of a great piece of creative art. And right now, to me, this is my opinion, just hands down the album the album of the year right now. Like I, I think he it came from a place, an authentic place. Um took you back to, you know, his youth, took you back to it, it, it's just it's just a, I, I've always been a killer Mike fan. Certainly he's become known more for what he's done, you know, outside the studios recently. Uh, and certain things he's done to promote uh, black wealth and what have you as a businessman. He has a, he's a great businessman, acumen. He has a great business acumen. And, you know, well, listen, regardless of what you feel about his politics and what have you, that's a whole other story. And I'm not knocking it, but regardless of how you feel in terms of he's moved that way, this is a guy who has gone out of his way to empower black people. So I like you can say what you want about his politics. He's trying to make he's this guy is a is a business owner. He's the owner of a lot of land. He's he's empowering black people to do better in a way that's respectful. Not not questioning, not questioning, you know, bus drivers. Uh <laughs> you, you remember that. But um he, you know, this this piece of work is a is something to something to listen to. I, like I said, I would recommend it to anybody. And like I said, if you want this is real hip hop, just true artistry. Uh, uh, at 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 a high high level, so I I I, uh, I reckon strongly recommend it, and I think that right now is without question to me the album, hip hop album of the year. What hip hop needed, by the way, 
is what hip hop needed this year in 2023. So Zion Williamson, uh, the other class of 19 star, uh, along with John Morant, has been uh, in the news the last couple of weeks. Uh, we know what's going on with in terms of his personal life, uh, basically being, uh, you know, exposed by a porn star from that standpoint and you know that to me is i'm not gonna say that that is near it's neither here nor there but it's kind of neither here nor there uh the problem is i so what are the thoughts about and that these are real questions as far as what has been within that organization whether or not to trade giant zion williamson you have not heard you've heard his name Loaded around in, in draft day trade rumors, and you have not heard the New Orleans Pelicans shoot it down at all. There is some talk within that organization that you know is this guy ever going to be committed to basketball? Uh, they haven't liked. Uh, I read there was a piece in the, the Athletic that detailed the fact that you know the uh, the relationship struggle between the Zion's people and the doctors. Uh, his rehab, you know, his rehab. They haven't, they haven't liked, it, you know, his uh, rehab habits. Uh, Zion has a lot going on that has not served him as a basketball player, and there's a thought that some of these injuries that he's had, that that he's, that he's had, could be avoided with the proper, obviously, with the proper training, with the proper rehab, and. Listen, they, you know, Portland has that number, has that top three pick. Um, they don't want, they, they're not going to move Ingram. They love Ingram. I mean, they love Ingram. So that's not going to happen. Um, there's a thought that they could probably, I mean, it, I, I don't think anybody would be shocked if he gets moved. Um, I myself now, I myself wouldn't move him because I I, th I still think the weight. I still think he's salvageable, salvageable at 22 years old. We know the talent is off the charts. Like they, when he's healthy, which is rare, but on the floor, they are a very good basketball team. And with all the pieces that they have, they might even be a contender, a borderline contender. Um, with him on the floor, and I just think that as an organization, if you are worth anything as an organization, that you should be able to fix a Zion Williamson. I think it's much hard. I, I like I, to be honest with you. I, I think it's much more challenging for what in terms of what Memphis is dealing with with John Morant than what New Orleans is with John, with, with Zion Williamson. Because I because you're counting on because when you start talking about off the field stuff as far as like that could possibly go towards criminal, that's a whole other story. It's, now Zion work ethic, laziness, that can be fixed. I forget about his forget about his, the, the porn star. Like guys have had women trouble. Guys have had women issues in the NBA and professional sports for, for eons. There's nothing new. The only reason, the only thing is different now is we have social media. I'm sure there were some guys in the mid to the, the early 2000s, 90s, 80s that had porn that were they mess with porn stars. This is nothing new for them. That's that, from that standpoint. This is nothing new under the sun. So let's put that aside. The problem with Zion is it's on top of all the other issues that he has that this comes out, like staying in shape or staying on the court. Or people questioning his his uh, desire to play basketball. So that that's the problem when stories about a porn star trying to exploit him come out, or she's trying to threaten him by exposing you know exposing a sex alleged sex tape allegedly. Um, so I I still think I, I think Zion is more is I and it's hard to say because he has he has not been on the court and I certainly feel like out of the two players that John Moran is way more fixable. No, excuse me, that John Moran is way more committed to bat to being on the court, being playing basketball than Zion is. But the problem is, I, I don't, like Zion, like the problem is John Moran's, you know, 
trying to be, you know, seemingly wants to be, seemingly wants to be a gangster, or seemingly doesn't, or seemingly does not know who, you know, is having some major identity issues in terms of dealing with some of the stuff that he's dealing with. Um, again, I, I, I wouldn't trade him uh, right now unless I just got a drop dead deal that was just too good to be true. But yeah, I, that would just you had to just completely knock me out the park with a deal uh with a drop dead deal and right now zion does not have that kind of value uh from that standpoint so i would try to fix zion if i'm new orleans and and and, and, and go from there but would it surprise me or shock me if he is traded no absolutely not absolutely not um zion, not zion draymond green opts out of his contract that was no again no one should be surprised by that. And I think people are making a mistake trying to read too much into it, saying that he no longer wants to deal with Golden State and Golden, bringing, up, bringing up the tape that Golden State, like leaking out the video of him punching Jordan Poole. Yes, that happened, and we know that derailed this season. But I, I fully expect him to be a Golden State word next year because the bottom line is Draymond is not going to – I don't see him going to a, rec, a, a average team. There are not that many teams – that are a fit for Draymond. And, you know, yeah, I would say if I'm a Lakers, I would love him, love to take him, or I certainly would take him over Kyrie. But even that, I don't think Dray, I, I think Golden State can give Draymond more money than, than the Lakers and why and probably Dray, Dray will get more money from from uh from the go from Golden State than uh these other teams out there. I don't again I don't see Draymond being on on a, a average to mediocre team, so I can only see him with a contender. So I think this is all going to be a bunch of a hubbub, and Draymond Green ends up resigning with Golden State. Myself, uh, of course, the draft is tomorrow. Again, there will be a number. I expect a number of of trades. I expect a I, I, like I, I if you if you told me that there was a record number of trades made. That the, the, there was a record number of trades made tomorrow night. I would not be surprised, at least be surprised by that. And I think over the course between the draft and this summer, you're going to see a number. You're going to see some big time. You're going to see some guys move. You're going to see a lot of guys move before this before the CBA kicks in. So uh, again, you are seeing the Celtics with what they're doing. Um, Lillard is still out there. Uh, Zion Williamson could still be could possibly be still out there, so we'll see what happens with the draft. Uh, who moves up? What is Portland do with their pick? Uh, I will talk to you later on in the week. Have a great, great rest of the week. Uh, rest of your week on this latest edition. This is the Real Deal Podcast. We will be. Uh, I will. Be, this will be put up uh, early tomorrow morning. So be on the lookout for that. Take it, take it light, take it light.